good. Well, first, before, as we start getting into our message, it's a special message we have tonight for you for uh, this weekend. We're going to get into our, get back into our um, Armor of God series, which is so important next weekend. So make sure you come back for that. But uh, we want to start a message off with just uh, this short video. In my America, in my America, in my America, in my America, I am free. In my America, I get to choose my leaders. In my America, we the people is a colorless phrase. In my America, I am free. Oh, say can you see? In my America, any one of my daughters can be a soldier, a doctor, and a mother. In my America, freedom of speech doesn't exclude Christianity, it's rooted in it. In my America, family comes first. In my America, I can own my own business. In my America, we honor our troops and their sacrifices. In my America, one nation is followed by under God. In my America, so gallantly In my America, fireworks remind me of the gift of freedom. In my America, I am free. In my America, I can worship freely. In my America, the Founding Fathers used the Bible to guide their pen. In my America, you can snowboard wherever you want to, even at the mall. In my America, Charlton Heston is a hero. In my America, I can raise my children in the nurture and admonition of my faith. In my America, freedom takes action. So grateful for this nation. You know, we are Canadian by birth and came here 17 years ago, and we are grateful um, for what God has in this nation, that he's got a plan for us, that he's not done with us, that he has some great things ahead, and we want to understand his heart for us. But God has two nations that are close to his heart, um, his, favor, that his favor flows and who are deeply, deeply connected to the blessing of God and who are blessed by God. The first one is Israel. They, are cre- they were created as a nation because God chose them as his people. And even in their rebellion, God called them his children. But America is also blessed because we are the only nation in the world who started and came to develop America so we could freely choose God. So these two nations are deeply, in, God is deeply invested in. And so we want to go a little bit deeper into this and, and the foundations of that. I, I want to read from the book of Genesis. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. If you don't crack yours open very often, I'm just letting you know it's the beginning. And, 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 and God made this covenant to this guy by the name of Abraham. And listen to what he says. I have plans to make you a great people from your descendants, and I am going to put a special blessing on you and cause your reputation to grow so that you will become a blessing and an example to others. I will also bless those who bless you and further you in your journey, and I will trip up those who try to trip you up along the way. Through your descendants, all, everybody say all, of the families of the earth will find their blessing in you. And so when we read through scripture, we see Abraham, and then we see his son Isaac, and then we see his son Jacob, and every descendant after, God always went back and he said, but I, I made, I'm in covenant with them. And see, when God makes a covenant, he can't change his mind. He can't back out. He is, he is bound by his covenant of blessing. So you say to yourself, well, that's great, but I didn't grow up in the Jewish home. Come on, people, go ahead. If you didn't grow up in the Jewish home, just nod your head. So there's some really good news in this because in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 it says, Yet Christ paid the price to set us free from the curse of the law. He absorbed the curse completely, good news, and he became a curse in our place for it is written, everyone who is hung on a tree is cursed. Jesus Christ dissolved the curse from our lives so that in him 
all the blessings of Abraham, wait a minute, we just talked about them, can be poured out upon the Gentiles. See, that's me. Gentiles are non-Jew people. And now through faith, we receive the promised Holy Spirit who lives in us. So you don't understand. Jesus said you didn't qualify to be in, to be in this blessing because you weren't born into that family. But when you become a child of God, you ask Jesus to come into your life. He adopts you into this family. And in that family, there's blessings in that family. There's promises in that family. In fact, if you open up the Bible and you look at it all the way from Genesis all the way to, 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 to just where the book of Acts starts. It's the greatest Jewish success manual you've, you've ever read. Oh, it's quiet in here. Church was never mentioned. It's the, it's the greatest Jewish success manual you could ever read. And then all of a sudden, the book of Acts, something happened. And when Jesus died, he opened up the door for the whole family. Anybody that made Jesus the Lord of life all of a sudden was adopted yes. into this amazing family. And that's why I say sometimes I might be the redhead stepchild in the corner. Come on, somebody. But I'm still in the family. Come on, go ahead. Give yourself a shake on that one. I'm still in the family. If you're a child of God, you're in the family of God. This is good news. And so because of what Jesus did, we get to have the same blessing that God said is on Israel, that is on Abraham, okay? So I want you to look at this. Jesus brought us into Abraham's covenant and the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is God's way of operating and doing things. We are now his protected ambassadors on earth with all the privileges, authority, protections, and benefits of heaven. We, are, we have all the privileges, authority, protections, and benefits of heaven. Come on, somebody. Nobody's excited about that? I'm a little bit excited about that. That means... Like Jesus prayed, he says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means as children of God, when we belong in the kingdom of heaven, when we understand that we've been brought into this family, that the blessing of God is ours, that we have an authority on earth to bring heaven to earth, that we have the authority to bring victory, we can bring healing, we can bring all of those things because of what Jesus did. The problem is we don't know what we're entitled to, right? We've been, we've been kind of going around, well, you know, God knows where to find me. no. God says, no, I have a plan, but you got to know the plan, okay? Step in. I can start showing you, and I can start bringing you, but we have to first be in God's family to have those blessings, right? Which is why we accept Jesus and um, can have access to that. You know, I had the, the amazing privilege several years ago to meet Jonathan Kahn, the rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who was born and raised, and he was, his whole family's in the lineage of the Levites. And so he, he had grown up understanding all the Jewish laws and then met Jesus. And then everything changed. But when he speaks, he speaks from a level of depth of scripture that we don't quite understand because see the foundation it's a judeo christian uh, religion that we walk in it's a relationship with jesus but when you understand your foundation all of a sudden you get it and and he made this comment he said a lot of people look at different nations and say they're blessed because it's the nation that they're in and he says i want to correct you on something and i want to show you something and he took a picture of israel from 1948 just as it became a nation and he had a, a picture of Jerusalem and in, in, in Jerusalem all you could see out on the outskirts of Jerusalem was tumbleweed. Come on people. Does that look like it's a prosperous place to be? It's interesting because he took a picture in 1958 of the same area of Jerusalem and now all of a sudden Jerusalem and then all the areas just outside of Jerusalem were all green. But see, 10 years ago they were all tumbleweed but now they were green. And then he went to 68 and 78 and 88 and 98 and every time you'd look at the, the, the pictures of, of Israel they didn't look the same. What used to be desert and tumbleweed was now vibrant, growing crops that had just broken loose. I mean, Israel today is the largest nation in the Middle East that gives, it sells their fruit to, to all the other neighboring countries in the desert. Now, how can you go from a desert to an oasis? Think about this, people. Well, you know, it's because God blessed him. He said, no, I want you to know something. He says, and never forget this. He says, the blessing of Abraham is on you, not on the land. But because you live in the land, he says, it gets blessed. Amen. Did you just hear what I said? I said, the reason why your neighbors are blessed because you live next door to them. 
I said the, the, the reason why the blessing has been released on this earth is because of the believers. This nation was birthed in, in God. That's why there's supernatural favor. That's why all the other nations don't like us because when we rise to the top. Listen, God can't help it. He doesn't know how to fail. All he knows how to do is succeed. You hang around with God, you have no choice. You're just going to succeed. He doesn't know how to fail. Amen. It's not in his vocabulary. If you opened up God's dictionary, you'd look for fail and you'd never see me blank pages. See, how he only knows victory. That same spirit that lives in Jesus Christ, the Bible says, lives in you. That's why the blessing's there. It, it, it takes your mind and it shifts it. But all of a sudden you're like, whoa, whoa, God's really put something on me I didn't even know I had. That's what the devils were trying to tell you. You, you, you got to go and get it. No, you already have it if you're a child of God. Yeah. It already belongs to you. It's want, in your DNA. I want to clarify one detail here of the difference in Israel. Between 48 and 58 was when the treaty was signed where the Jewish people were allowed to come back to Israel. You see, the Jewish people came back to the land and that's what brought the blessing. You see, that's why it's so important that we realize that we, as the children of God, are the ones who will change the culture of our nation. The, 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 the culture, even the, even the land, yes. even the land... The, the farmland, the economy will shift when we understand the power of us as believers being in this land. Now, I want to look at America. Okay, so that's Israel. Why Israel is blessed. But I want us to look at America. Um, also, Canada. Canada had Canada Day this week, and we welcome our Canadian campus, our Winnipeg campus. Uh, we're sure praying for you. I know you're getting a little bit more freedom. Praise God. We keep pushing yeah. in. But look at this. So in America and Canada... We will be blessed by God when we return as believers to God and take our rightful place as residents of this land. In other words, when we start being in this land with a spiritual authority, not a, oh, you know, whatever happens, happens. But when we understand, you know, you might be out, not out taking up arms against this and that, but you can pray and you can take your authority and you can be who God's called you to be in victory. And when we all do that as believers in this land, guess what? Things change. Yeah. Right? That's what will turn this nation around. Both nations, man, Canada is in a, in, in a bit of a pickle right now. But you know what? It's God's revival not done. time. They're going to start standing up. I say up. Canada, they it's revival gonna... time. Amen, yeah. amen. So likewise, the United States also has rights, benefits, and privileges when you are a citizen or a legal immigrant of this country. <laughs> Just like when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you get adopted into the family and all of a sudden all the blessings that God has, you qualify and they belong to you. You just have to walk by faith to take them. As soon as you become an American citizen or a legal immigrant, you get all the benefits of this nation too. Oh, it's quiet in here. Some of you, you don't understand. See, I came from a foreign nation. I said, you get all the benefits of this nation. It's the greatest nation in the world. God breathed. God's hand has been on it all along. And some of you are thinking, wow, what's the big deal? I said, well, go try another one out and tell me. Come on, people. See, we, we don't understand. We sit there and we say, well, what does that all mean? I said, well, let's go back to the foundations. How many people know foundations are really important? Matthew Let's look at Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. Everyone who hears my teaching and applies it to his life can be compared to a wise man who built his house on an unshakable foundation. When the rains fell and the flood came, with fierce winds beating upon his house, it stood firm because of its strong foundation. But everyone who hears my teaching and does not apply it to his life can be compared to a foolish man who built his house on sand. When it rained and rained and the flood came with wind and waves beating upon its house, it collapsed and was swept away. You see, foundations are important. Now, I don't know about you, but when you go to buy a house or buy, at least as a woman, you go to a house and you're looking at buying a condo or a house or a cool place, Foundation is not my first priority. I want to know how does it look? Is it pretty? Is it in a good location? Right? Now, he's the one to come and go, okay, how's the foundation? You know, does the, you know whatever else. But that foundation is, is really important. Because no matter how pretty it looks, 
right? And we've just seen this. We'll talk more later about this whole Miami building that collapsed. If the foundation is not strong, you've got disaster ahead. And the same thing in our nation. We have to know that the foundation of our nation is why we are blessed. But we can never forget the foundation, Okay, because there's a lot trying to pull us away from our foundation as a nation. And we need to stay firm in our foundation as a nation as well as in our life. So um, why, let's look at this. So why is America so blessed? Because of its foundation of God and its desire to serve him freely. Okay, United States decided to leave the tyranny of England, which was the um, most powerful, England was the most powerful nation on the earth at the time. But it was tyrannical, and they decided to leave because they wanted a place where people could choose to freely worship God or to choose not to worship him. You know, it's not just the freedom to worship him, which we appreciate, but it's also the freedom to choose not to. And that's so crazy, but that is what, this, what, they, what they came for, for this freedom. And so we want to talk a little bit about the freedom that we have and how it was structured in a godly foundation. You know, it was interesting because it was July uh, 4th of 1776 that all of a sudden it didn't look like this. It looked very different, but there was something that was put together for the, uh, called what? The declaration of what? The declaration of what? Independent, Independent of what? Of the tyranny. Independent of being bullied around. You look at today, I'm, I love Canada, but you look at all the nations that England has their fingerprint on, they're all government infested and nothing gets happened. And nothing happens there. It's a frustrating place to live, overtaxed and just difficult. Don't get mad at me for telling the truth. I used to live there. Okay, I know, honey, I'm not going to go there. She said, don't go there. I want to just hear something. I want you just to hear something, though, because here's what the word says. That, or here's no, what the, this is how the Declaration yeah. starts. The Declaration of Independence starts this way. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator, which is God, with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. See, they understood that God himself gave us rights and privileges that can never be taken away from us. They acknowledge that God is the one who is, who is giving rights, who, that we need to structure a foundation where nobody's God-given rights are ever tampered with. We want to make sure that God is able to have his way honored. And that's the foundation of America, a, a government that's supposed to protect our God-given rights. The government doesn't give us our God-given rights. They're there to protect our God-given rights. And, you know, even in Canada, um, I was studying more about the Charter of Freedom because there's a lot of dispute over it right now because a lot of their freedoms are getting stomped on, unfortunately. Stolen, but, yeah. Yes. But in the Charter of Rights, um, it was actually not till 1982 that their Charter of Rights became part of their constitution, but it has a lot of notwithstanding clauses in it, which is where um, they are getting stuck right now. But this is what they put. They put, whereas Canada is founded, this is the opening sentence, Canada is founded upon principles that recognize the supremacy of God. So we have nations that are founded on the very basic uh, foundation that God is supreme, that he is our creator, that he is the one who is, who is the foundational part of this. So in the foundations of America, they were put into the Constitution. And so we want to just look at how God, because a lot of people have argued, or I've heard a lot of arguments over the last year, oh, but God isn't, you know, America wasn't actually founded as a Christian nation. It's not really there, but it is. And we can never forget that. It was created with a foundation of us to have God-given freedoms to worship him freely. So the number one. Um, also, as you leave today, we have constitutions for you. Yeah. Well, we're okay? going to talk about them just in a minute. Number one, the main structure of this new nation was for no one to have absolute power but accountability and balance. And that's why there were three governing bodies with balanced power. And power was for the people and not for the governing body. So when you open up the Constitution, it says we the, we the who? We the billionaires? We the corrupt politicians? Come on, people. We the 
that's how the whole thing was set up from the beginning. You think we're maybe a little off track. Just throwing it out there. See, when the people had their rights taken away from them, they would say, hey, that's not okay. We want our rights back. Those were put in the Constitution for a reason so that the governments would stay in control and not take control of the people. Did you just hear what I said? Canada doesn't have that. That's where the governments run them over like a freight train. Thank God for a good governor in Florida that will put up with that. Sorry, I had But to I just want to say for Canada, rabbit. God is not done with you. Yeah. God is not done with you. God has got an amazing plan and we need to contend for it. Just as we learn all these foundations, we have to understand that God still has a plan. Number two in our constitution, the whole purpose of the constitution was to give to each of us freedoms, not to give permission to the government to control, exactly the opposite. They recognize that the freedom comes from God. And, um, you know, I talk, mentioned a little bit earlier that when this nation was was birthed, they weren't, we weren't forced to worship God. You were given a choice. It was a country created so we have the choice to worship God freely or not choose God. And you know, that is such a godly principle because even back in the Garden of Eden, when creation started, Adam and Eve, God created Adam and Eve, you know, he gave them all this stuff to enjoy. And then he said one, he gave one tree. He says, do not touch this one tree. You know, he could have I mean, he knew we were going to mess it up. And if Adam and Eve didn't mess it up, someone, one of us would have, right? Um, but he could have just not had that tree or he could have blinded them to it. So they never even saw it. But what he did is he wanted us to have free choice. He wanted us not to serve him because we were robots and we had to. You know, that's why like God gives us free choice and he will defend that choice. You know, in, in, for every single one of us, he will defend your choice to choose all the way to the gates of hell. And you're like, <gasps> how could a good God send people to hell? A good God does not send people to hell. Hell was created for Satan and all his demons. It wasn't created for human beings. But he gives you a choice to choose him or not choose him. And he defends your right to choose, which is why it's so important that we choose Jesus. Why it's so important we tell our friends about Jesus who this amazing God. It's because of the consequence of our choices that we end up um, in hell. But God is the one who gives us free choice. Well, one of the other freedoms in this constitution was the right to assemble. Well, freedom of religion. Right? You want to talk about freedom of religion Well, we have first? the freedom of religion. Yeah. I kind of talked about that. But yeah, we can serve God, right? Yes. Um, he, they cannot tell us how to believe, how, how to serve God, how we assemble, what our doctrine could be. So it, us... it's interesting because God himself said in the scriptures not to neglect meeting together as the children of God, as the family of God, as the church. Do you think he knew 2020 was coming? Yeah. Do you know that the assignment, a part of the assignment of COVID was to break the church up? <laughs> Come on. Well, you've got to be fear. Listen, we don't have a spirit of fear. We have a spirit of yeah. love, power, and a sound mind. Yeah, but you don't understand how bad this virus is. I said, well, uh, uh, it says in Psalm 91.10 that no deadly disease will come near your house. I said, so who are you going to believe? See, this design was to try to destroy the church. I said, but some crazies, like us, said, no, we're not shutting down. No, we're not backing down. No, you don't know what I need to wear masks. No, you don't need a social distance. Let's slap the devil upside the head. It's time the church step into the victory that they were supposed to walk in. Don't get mad at me because it's in the scripture. I'm just repeating it. Well, see, God knew that in times of crisis, we needed to meet together more than in times of peace. Yeah. He knew that in a time of crisis like 2020 and 2021, that suicide rates would like quadruple, skyrocket. That people would be stressed about how do I handle these situations? How do I do this? How do I do it? That's why he told us, don't forget to come together. Amen. Come together. There's power in what God can do when we come together. And the great thing is in this nation, we are allowed mm. to assemble. That has been challenged. Many state governments have tried to challenge that and shut that down. But ultimately, we are allowed to assemble. Praise God, because it is important that we meet. The worse it gets, the more we need to meet.
Come on. Amen. We need what God has so for us So the next one is the freedom together. of speech. We can preach God's word freely even when the culture doesn't like it, even when the worthless social media shut it down because they don't want to hear the truth. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't get mad at me now for telling the truth, people. <laughs> you say certain things on social media and the next thing you know, you're blackballed. Really? I thought this was uh, a media to cover everybody so everybody could have their opinion. You don't think there's an agenda going on, do you? I mean, seriously. See, God's done with the agenda. That's why we're declaring liberty for all these assignments against this nation Amen. and against the people are going to be broken. And we're going to de- de- declare the tyranny of, of, of our breakthrough and we're going to see God move in a supernatural way. You know, our nation was truly birthed um, as a place of Christian foundations. Not just a place of freedom to be a Christian, but it was based in Christian values. And I wanted just, I found a few quotes that I really thought just firmly established this that I wanted to share. John Adams, who was the second president of the United States in 1798, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government of any other. Isn't that interesting? You know, and we all talk about, oh, there has to be a separation between church and state. No, that's a completely misconstrued concept and misunderstood. We as Christians need to rise up and be the politicians. We need to be the ones writing the laws. We need to be the the ones out there. And and we need to be voting for those who have godly values. Okay, so there is an important thing. Benjamin Franklin, you know who he is? Signer of the Constitution and Declaration, on July 28th, 1787, he said this, I have lived a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, it is probable that an empire can rise. It is probable that an empire is it. I'm sorry, I'm going to get this. It's a question. We're Is it have probable English class later. <laughs> that an empire can rise without his aid? In other words, there's no way. There's no way you can succeed as a nation unless God's involved. Yeah. Right. But what is the thing that's been moved out? Prayer's been moved out of school. You can't bring, praise God, you know, over the last few years, these changed and we brought prayer back in. We're allowed to bring Bibles. But for a while, I mean, you couldn't bring a Bible to school. Kids were getting expelled for bringing a Bible. Like, that is not right. We need to bring God back. Now look at John Jay. Uh, Maybe you've never heard of him. He was the first Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. In 1797, he said this, Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers, and it is uh, the duty as well as the privilege and interest of our Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for our rulers. Come on. That is not a separation of church and state. That is the church comes up, rises up, and leads in a godly manner. Amen. We need to understand our nation is built and defined by Christian values. You know, look at our currency. Yeah, it says what on it? In God we? It doesn't say in the people we trust. In gold we trust. In in the government we trust. (laughs) In God we trust. You know, every time you spend money, you want to just have a look at that currency. Yep, there, there you go. It's right there again. Well, look at our Pledge of Allegiance. One nation under God. Not one nation under a political party. One, not one nation under a political system. It's one nation under God. You know, we've got to keep declaring that. We've got to keep declaring it, that there is unity in our nation under God under godly principles, under the power of God, out of the love of God that he has for the people of this nation. Um, Now, we have to pay attention to our foundations, right? So our foundation is godly, but we have to make sure we pay attention. You know, a foundation that starts good can go bad, right? We look at this horrific, horrific disaster in Miami right now. This was a 12-story building um, that collapsed and pancaked in literally about three, four seconds last week. And... And there's, uh, I don't, 100 and, well, there's like 150 still missing, 12 dead, um, and, and it's just horrific. But what happened is they said that they, there was a report not long ago, and it started a couple years ago, where there are concerns on the foundation. Um, in April, a report came out, and apparently the cost to fix it would be each condo owner having a hundred to $300,000 expense. And you're having to say, Ugh. 
And sometimes it can seem like the it cost is too much to really worry about, so you kind of like, you make do. That didn't work. And you know what, in our nation, it won't work, and in our lives, it won't work. When we see cracks in the foundation, we have to do whatever it takes. We have to pray and fast as long as it takes. We have to put Christian politicians in for as much as it takes to make sure that those cracks are filled, that they're fixed, that we don't just let cracks keep going. Amen. Right? We need to understand that the foundation of our nation was God-breathed. We cannot allow God to be pushed out of our nation. Yeah. Because God is the foundation. Without God, there is no foundation and it's going to collapse. We don't have to put our faith in politicians. We don't have to put our faith in a political party. We don't have to put our faith in economic policies. We have to put our faith in God and his principles to rule and reign this place. Amen. Right? And so when we do that, it's amazing what God can do in this nation. I, I want to talk about erosion because they said part of the cause that happened with that condo collapsing was the pool leaked. See, it's cheaper just to add a little more water. But where's the water going? What's it doing? What's it causing? Come on, you can close your eyes to the problems in your life and just keep adding a little extra this or a little extra that. But at the bottom line is something's happening that's not controllable. And all of a sudden, in, the, in this case here, they, it was cheaper and less work just to add a little more water. But what was happening was underneath. See, a lot of times we don't see what's in our foundations because they've been eroding. We've let little things into our lives. We've, well, it's just a little white lie. Well, it's just a little bit of cheating on my wife on the weekend when, when she was out of town. It was just a little bit of this. It was just a little, is there anything that's ever just a little bit? Because it was, honey, it was just a, you know, it was just a little cheating. How many women think that just a little bit of cheating is like a lot of cheating? <laughs> And all of a sudden the foundation comes out. Why? Because you've, you, you, you've allowed things to erode at your mind. You don't, you've, I went to the grocery store and I had a fair. I said, you're a liar. You've been thinking about that for years. You've been meditating on that, thinking about this opportunity ever came up. See, if you allow the erosion in your life, you're going to miss what happens. And all of a sudden your life collapses. And all of a sudden your marriage falls apart. All of a sudden your financial things happen. All of a sudden, why? Because we have to keep our foundation strong. Little problems. I tell people this because I own a lot of buildings. I said, listen, when there's a roof leak, please call us immediately. They don't fix themselves. It only gets worse. Are you hearing me? Might as well take care of it right now so that we can deal, not, not have to deal with the, with the buckets everywhere and then wonder why it caves in down the road. See, well, in our own lives, are we taking care of the issues? Our hearts, are we checking our hearts? Are, are, are we saying, hey, did I, did I do the right thing? See, Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, that my people who are called by my name, I say, that's me, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God, Bible says, God said, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins, and I'll heal their land. I don't know about you, but I think this nation's been crying out to God. We've been humbling ourselves. We're saying, God, we don't know what happened, but we need a supernatural touch from heaven. We need a divine move of God to show up. See, he'll only operate through the church. The church has the authority. Did you hear what I said? The church has to release it. I said, God, let's bring some, let's bring some clarity. Let's bring some justice back. Let's bring some... Come on, people. Let's get some breakthroughs. You need a Canadian to stir you up as an American. Come on, people. Slap yourself and say, wake up. Are you praying? Are you getting serious with God? Are you keeping your foundation strong? Are you, are, are you coming and saying, God, heal our land? See, I believe that he's heard our prayers. The prophets have spoken. It's going to get good. You wait. You just wait these next few weeks. I said, things are about to get good. I said, things are about to get good. God heard. God is a God that makes, that makes his move in his season. But I really believe that when we push into God, that's when our lives start to get the breakthroughs that they need. I'm so grateful that when we mess up, God has a rescue plan. <laughs> 
He has a rescue plan for our nation. You know, the, the, the Jewish people, if you read through the book of Judges, man, they messed up every 40, 50 years. They just kept doing it over and over and God kept bringing them somebody new to redeem them, kept bringing them somebody new. You know, he has a rescue plan, but he also has a rescue plan for you personally. When you've messed up, when, when things have gotten out of control in your life. First John 1, 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. I am so grateful that what Jesus did for us on that cross, when he died for us, he took all the penalty of sin. He took all of it so that when we mess up, which he knew we would, he says, you know, I've got a way for you to come back into me. And when you come and when, when you ask me just to forgive you, it's as simple as that. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my life. You know, I can erase all of that. We can, we can make it like it didn't happen. I can get rid of the shame. I can get rid of the hurt. I can change your heart around. I can, I can do all of that. Isn't that amazing how he loves us so much? Not just so we can be part of a religion, but so we can be part of a relationship. He wants you in a relationship so much. I want to invite you to pray a prayer. And I'm going to ask everybody to bow their heads and close their eyes. If you're here online, don't tune out now. This is the time where you, get a, you can make a choice to get adopted into the family of God and become a child of His. With every eye closed and every head bowed, if you're here today and say, Pastor, I'm not walking with God, or I just need to get my life right with Him. I'm wherever you are, nobody's looking around. Just raise your hands. We want to be praying for you. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I want to pray this prayer. Thank you for that hand. I want to pray that prayer. I want to pray this out loud and ask you to repeat it out loud and online. Do the same thing. Say this out loud. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Forgive me. Forgive me. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And help me to live for you. And help me to live for you. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We're going to have communion in a minute. But if you prayed that prayer, I would love if you took one immediate step. Um, and just texted the word connect to us. There's a number that's going to be on the screen. Or um, if you are in the room with us here, you can take one of those cards and fill it out. Let us know. And we would love to equip you. If you need a Bible, yeah, one of these cards here at the back, it says, I, today I prayed that prayer. Um, just let us know. We, have, we would love to help you and with whatever resources. This will connect you to myself and my team. Um, that will help you walk through this.